Welcome to The Exclusive. I'm your host, Sharon Tharp. I'm back for the fourth episode of my Winner's Way In series, where every week I talk to a different winner. I'm really excited this week because he promised that he would be completely unfiltered with me. And I'm really excited to talk to Big Brother 19 winner and challenge bet, Josh Martinez. Josh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Honestly, I was like, I was telling you, I feel like I know you already Mm -hmm. because I keep up with your tweets and you keep me up to date with (laughs) what's going on in the house. I try. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to finally chat. Yeah, we're going to chat a little bit about everything. Like, I want to talk about the challenge, too, and I'm sure people want to hear from you. Um, But just give us like the update for BB fans. Like, what's the life update? Are you still in Miami? Like, what are you up to these days? Yeah, Yeah, so I live in Miami, in downtown Miami. Um, Still working with the fam. I've done a few seasons of the challenges. I'm on my sixth one. Wow. Um, And life's just been different. If you haven't seen me since Big Brother, I've it's been a long time it's been six years so life is completely different for the better and I'm happy about that so it's been good yeah yeah I was gonna actually wait to ask this question but someone did tweet at me they're like Josh had such a glow up since big brother like <laughs> what know. was the catalyst for that just being on the challenge and just like getting uh, older obviously <laughs> I think just getting older yeah I think yeah. getting older seeing myself on tv I'm just like all right you know you gotta you know, once I think definitely the challenge helped, you know, when you have an opportunity to win a lot of money and to compete, I've always been competitive, but um, I think, I don't know, I'm definitely just putting energy into bettering myself. Mm. I'll be honest with you also dealing with a lot of haters and people wanting to see me fail. I think that just fuels me. And I'm like, watch me prove you wrong, fucker. So I think just fu- putting all that energy into just myself, it's what um, I think gave me a little bit of a globe, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you look good. That's a compliment. People are saying you look good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you, would you say you get recognized more for Big Brother or the challenge at this point? I get so it's crazy because I get recognized a lot. Like it's not I, for both. I would say for both. I mean, I go out with friends from you know. I hang out with a lot of people from the show, so we'll go out and I get recognized fairly for both. I think as of recently, I don't know. It's weird. Like I, I'll go to Publix and people know me from Big Brother. Or, it's just, I think it's funny. Some people look at me and they're like, wait, I know you from somewhere. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm that guy. Or they recognize me through my voice. It's just weird. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about me, but I stand out and people spot me from both shows. So it's pretty even. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about Big Brother 25 before we talk about, I want to talk about your experience and the challenge, but has, I know you went into BB19 as like a huge fan of the show. Has yeah. your fandom changed since being on the show? Or are you still the same fan? Or are you a little bit less? Or what do you think? It has. It yeah. It's so weird. So I think once I got, I think the last season that I was like fully invested was season 20, the season right after mine. And then slowly it kind of like died down. I think I used to be a feeds, like I used to watch feeds and I would watch every single episode and I didn't miss an episode growing up um, from like season 14 on. And then um, before going on my season, I just went back and watched every single season, which probably was the worst thing I did. (laughs) Whatever you want. I I mean, it worked out, but I spiraled early on. Um, But yeah, I watched and I, I don't know what it is. I think it's kind of weird because I love the game and I love the show. But once you play it, you just look at the game with a whole different perspective. Like you just kind of know the reality of it and it takes away the, I wouldn't say the spark, but it definitely like it switches your, your perspective on the game. Um, Still love the show, obviously, but yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't watch, I can't keep up with the feeds, especially this season, which I'm bummed. Cause I, I know that the feeds is where it's at. And like, that's, there's so much gameplay going on, but I just can't keep up with it. Um, I think the last time I truly watched feeds was, Ooh, I think like where I sat there and actually watched it, I think was season 20 to be real. Yeah, wow. Yeah, but I catch the episodes or I'll I'll get caught up and I'll go back and watch. So I definitely watch the episodes, but um it's yeah. a lot. And you also have the challenge airing right now. So it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's funny. Every uh, most winners who I feel like were super fans, like you, like Dan, like Franz, so like I feel like their fandom does change. Like they they become more casual just because, you know, being on the show, you see the whole other side of it. So kind yeah, of- it's crazy that that happens Um, because you would expect the whole like the opposite. But yeah, yep. it definitely does happen. Funny. Um, well, I know like I've seen your tweets. I know you keep up, like you said, like as best you can with the show. Yeah. What are you thinking about this season so far? 
I think it's so crazy to me because this is the first season since my season that I watch and it reminds me of season 19. It's mm-hmm. just weird. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It just, it has, I like, there's a lot of characters in there that you, I see myself rooting for, but there's a lot of people that like, you know, are playing, they're playing because they want to play Big Brother. There's not, I feel like with past seasons, people go on and they know what they're going to get. They know the followers are going to come. They know the brand deals. They know the challenge call is going to happen and i think this season there's a lot of people that are just playing the game and it's so fucking sorry can i curse on you yeah you can curse (laughs) it's so fucking entertaining to watch um that's why i'm a little bummed that i'm not keeping up with feeds but i do like it i think the whole twist with sari it just i cannot watch sari and not think about paul it just reminds me so much of my season you know especially just throwing her in and then now America's vote, which I'm, I don't have much clarity on that, but it's just, it's, it just reminds me a lot of my season. I don't know. It's weird. This yeah. season's a lot more likable, a lot of more like <laughs> practice and people on there for sure, but it does yeah. give me a 19 vibe. With in, in terms of entertainment purposes, I, I totally see it. Cause your, your season was very entertaining too. Um, yeah, did, yeah. Like, <laughs> like you said, Sari kind of being like Paul a little bit in terms of like being in that world a little bit and coming in. Do you think if you played with Sari, would you align with her or would you want to get her out? I think I would initially align with her. Mm. This is probably going to get me in trouble. <laughs> well, no matter how many twists the producers throw this season, they could throw 5,000 twists. America could have 5 million votes. The biggest twist is Sari. And that's something that I realized with my season. It took me a while, probably took me like until the third week. And I was like, Paul's not going anywhere. Like mm-hmm. this guy is the biggest twist. This guy is the biggest you know, they put a lot on him to be here. So this guy's not going anywhere. And I think that there's two games that are being played. There's a game that's being played in the house. And then there's the game that's being played in the DR. Yeah. Now, I get in trouble for saying that, but the reality is she's the biggest twist of the season. How do you not work with her? I think Izzy could have blown up their game. And I think the smartest thing she did was, hey, I'm going to be loyal to you guys. And that's benefiting her or has benefited her. Um, so I think initially I would work with her, but down the line, like as soon as we hit jury, I would flip it and just be like, mm. oh, gotta go. But yeah. How do, you, how do you not root for her? I think also this girl's a reality titan. She knows what production wants. She knows what TV, what makes good TV. Um, you know, she knows what she's doing. So I think that there's a massive disadvantage, but that's why you need people like Sari in the game. That's why you need people in there that they know what producers want and she's gonna play a great game so I think how do you not root for her also you know yeah I know yeah. I, and she has like everyone talks about advantages and stuff and obviously Paul had those friendship bracelets so he wasn't going anywhere um you kind of just have to embrace them because that's part of Big Brother is these weird twists and if you work against them and you complain about them it's like you can't really go that far if you're just bitching about the, the twist the whole time. <laughs> um someone wanted to know who do you think is playing the most Josh game right now Izzy yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I've seen the comparisons on Twitter, guys, and I'll give you that. Um, I She's think, entertaining, too. <laughs> I want to see Izzy get put on the block so bad. <laughs> Just for my own entertainment, I want to see Izzy spiral. I think, um, but you know, I'll give her credit. She's playing a good game. Like I said, she aligning with Jared and Sari was the smartest thing she did. I think it was the smartest thing she did, but I also think, um, I think that they, I think, you know, obviously the house is split. There's, I mean, there's alliances happening every fucking second. Yeah. It's so hard to keep up with that. Um, but I think that as of right now, she's, she seems like she's good. I don't know what happened in the last 48 hours. Cause it changes in there every second, but, um, I think she's playing a good game, but yeah, yeah he's playing. It's just, it's like, does she have the killer instinct to get rid of Suri or Jared? Like a, when she has to Jared, she probably I hope, won't. I hope, I, will, I hope. I mean, for her game, when her back's against the wall, I hope she blows it up. That would be yeah. a very Josh move of her. But um, but who knows? I don't know if she'll do that. So, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. yeah. Um, In terms of, oh, people wanted to know, how would you have done in a, in a game like this when there's a lot of flip-flopping, a lot of random alliances? I know you tweeted, like, you hate to see, like, the anonymous votes, all, or not, not unanimous votes all the time. But, yeah, how do you think you would have played this season? Um... You know, it's, it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on and there's constant people. I mean, there's fucking 5,000 alliances. So it's, 
it's tough but i think for me because i've played the challenge and all that stuff i kind of i've learned how to adapt and i just like pick my crew and that's who i ride with and i stay loyal to that and i think that's what works for me um that that's what i've i would have picked my people um i don't know who i would have worked with i think initially i would have wanted to work with Sari, but i think it's all about like who do you initially connect with like i like how mm -hmm. Corey and america there was a connection and now they're like like you know they're working together and all that stuff so um i think it's that's how you go based off of you connect with people and then you go from there but um i don't know i, I would have definitely been calling people out and losing my shit for sure yeah, yeah. I can see that. Do you think you would have done okay in the pressure cooker or would you have made a deal? I know you said you were like, I would have at uh, 13 hours, I feel like why I mean if it's 13 hours in America <laughs> at that point, dude. Why are you throwing it? Like if I'm five, six hours in and I'm tired, I'm cutting deals left and right. But if you're right. top two, top three, like at that point, fucking do what you have to do to stay in the game. You know, mm -hmm. don't I would not throw it at that point. I, I think it was smart for her. She's not on the block. She has safety. She doesn't have to take a shot at somebody. So I think it was a smart play. But I think if you want to make a move, and I think it's the point in the game where it's time to take a shot, Um, I think she should have just went for it. I, I feel like she could have won that. So a little disappointed in that part with her on her game. But I'm I'm a big uh, America fan, and I, and I want to see her do well and make it far. So, yeah, I'm rooting for her. Me too. She's a she's a super fan. I like her. I, um, I, I like yeah. and she's a Latina. Like I, it's yeah. it's always nice to see Hispanic representation in there. So yeah, I'm definitely rooting for her. For sure. Um, this question's a little silly, but someone I you know I gotta bring it up because someone's at it. Who in the Big Brother house on uh, Big Brother twenty five house is a meatball? <laughs> oh God, I'm never gonna get away from that. Am I? <laughs> I'm trying to remind myself for six years. <laughs> I mean, it is a thing. <laughs> um, who's the meatball? I, um, t -t 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 Jared. <laughs> there you go. Jared. Jared is the biggest meatball. I mean, dude, how do you, all jokes aside, I'm like, I don't, so you guys keep me up to speed. I jumped on Twitter. Listen, I think Twitter is the most toxic fucking place, but when it comes to Big Brother, I need to stop cursing. But when it comes to Big Brother, that's where, like, I stay up to date, and that's when I'm on there the most. Um, And I saw a tweet, I think it was Rachel Riley, that he exposed it to Blue, and I'm like, you idiot. Instantly, mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? That is the dumbest. You just met this girl three weeks ago. This is your mom, for God's sake. Like, 750 on the line. Dude, you just don't. That's something you take to your grave. I mean, I... I didn't say until finale night that I was a super fan, let alone if I was playing with my mom, would I tell anybody that? That was just the dumbest. Yeah, Jared's the biggest meatball of the season. That was so stupid, man. And I don't know what it is. I saw myself rooting for him, and now as mm. the game used to go, I'm just like, uh, I think he's getting a little cocky, and I'm just, I don't do well with personalities like that. So I don't know, man. I really want to see him do good, but it's slowly getting turned off by his gameplay. Yeah. The crazy thing is Blue didn't seem to like, she was like, oh, okay. And then she thinks it's Felicia is his mom. It's really strange. The whole thing is weird. I don't know. I think Blue's <laughs> her. She's the what? I think Blue's there. Like, I'm going to get followers. And yeah, I think that's her. I mean, she's on Big Brother, you know? So I think, I don't think Blue's really playing, but that's just my. Yeah. I think she might be a TikToker too. I'm not positive, but. Okay. Makes yeah. sense um i do obviously want to talk about the challenge a little bit and don't worry guys i will get into bb19 and stuff i will ask them questions about that but in terms of the challenge like how do you prepare because you're i mean they film this show a lot so you are you always kind of training for this i mean yeah i think so i initially like you when i started i really didn't think just like big brother i didn't think it was going to turn anything into anything and as I continued getting the call and getting the call, it's like, all right, you take it more serious. There's a lot of money on the line. So it's kind of part of my lifestyle, which I'm so happy for because not even for my physical appearance, just for my mental training mm -hmm. and working out and doing CrossFit and just staying active is just part of my life. And it's something that, you know, if I go a day without working out, I don't feel good, like just mentally. So, um, I mean, you kind of got to stay ready, but with me, it's kind of just part of my habit and part of my lifestyle to train. And I'm always, working out and doing something um so yeah you just kind of stay ready for the call they call you a month out and they're like hey they'll give yep. you an availability call and like all right we're leaving in two months bet so you gotta just be ready whenever they decide to give you a call yeah called me a couple times so <laughs> <laughs>
Well, for this one, I mean, you've played obviously with some Big Brother and Survivor people on the MTV Challenge who have popped up, including yeah. yourself. This one was more CBS people. And, you know, you clearly have built relationships with the Challenge vets over the years. So that's who you were aligning with. But did you go in with a plan of like, okay, I'm going to stick with the the vets? Or were you like, let me feel it out. Let me play the middle. Like, what were you thinking? 100%. I went in. Which is, I think, obviously, there's only so much that they can show. There's 45 minutes. There's an yeah. hour they can show. And those conversations were had multiple times with people within, especially the Big Brother Alliance. I fell in the outs. Um, I came in and I was like, this is probably going to be my best season because I'm coming in the best spot. And even Johnny and Tori knew that. And they're like, hey, play your game. Do what you like. They were like, do what you have to do. We know you're going to have our back no matter what. So mm -hmm. I was, I came in clean slate i was like i'm gonna play with fucking everyone i'm just gonna i was gonna pull a serene like yeah. you know, i'm just gonna play every angle and to be honest with you i i, I kind of did in the beginning i really did but i felt i had never i'm usually the glue of the big brother alliance and this is the first time where i came in and i fell in the outs and it was for obvious reasons like monty Alyssa s um Alyssa, yeah Alyssa s um amira they're all from the same season then you have tiffany that Tiffany was kind of like the one that everybody had the link to. Like everybody felt comfortable mm -hmm. with her. The new kids felt good with her. Tyler felt good with her. So she was kind of the glue of the Big Brother Alliance, but I fell in the outs. They never talked game with me. Um, the CBS crew kind of kept me, kept me at arm's length. And I think it's because they knew my relationship with all these vets. So were they targeting me at first? No, they weren't coming for me, but I also wasn't in on game conversations. It was mm -hmm. like funny banter, like we got along and we were cool, but from there it didn't go anywhere. So I was like, all right, bet. I know my position in the game. Now it's time for me to play my own game and do my thing. But um, for the most part, it, it, it just like, I try to go in and play that game, but I wasn't like that olive branch wasn't extended to me. It was kind of just like, hey, you're safe, you're good. You can sit there and like... <laughs> not be involved and like ah oh, that's kind of not my style but. yeah no that's not your style <laughs> yeah be uh, here but okay <laughs> yeah well talk me through like for example that one deliberation where you like lost it one how frustrating is are those kind of where you guys are talking about nominations and two you know you've been on tv a lot you also know like what makes good tv does that also play into it like let me blow this up right now because okay so i <laughs> I know that people are not going to believe this. I I know nobody's going to believe this. I never react in a way that's going to make for good TV. I wish I can say that's that. That's your I, personality. <laughs> I, wish, I genuinely wish that I can be like, oh, yeah, I do things for TV. I don't. I think that's just my personality. In my real life, I'm really fucking chill. I'm the nicest guy. I can talk and get along with mostly anyone. And if I have a problem with somebody, I just walk away and go on about my life. And there you're stuck. And that's your reality. There's no escape. And my temper always gets the best of me. So those reactions are, but it's not like I'm putting on. Interesting. That went on for over an hour and a half. Production wow. was screaming at us, like the, literally screaming at us. They're like, if you guys don't make a decision in the next five minutes, all of you guys are going into elimination and we're going to let the hopper decide. So that I sat there for like a good 10, 15 minutes, letting the girls go and go and go. And I was just not budging. And then that's when I, then you see me go off. And that was like, I mean, not towards the end of deliberation. I was going off the whole deliberation, but that deliberation was the longest one. And it was frustrating because nobody was giving me anything. Chanel went with her set mindset. I obviously had my agenda. And um, what I couldn't let happen was let them kind of steamroll. Because if they would have gotten their way in that deliberation, it would have been game over. Like it would have been a wrap. Mm -hmm. It would have been Johnny and West down there. One of them would have been gone. And then it would have been a steamroll for the CBS people. I still think I would have been fine, but I just didn't want that to happen. And I mean, it made for great TV, but yeah, that was intense. That was. Yeah. I mean, you, you knew you were going to have to draw the line at some point and you know. Hold <laughs> in. I think once they realize they're like, all right, this guy's not budging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you mended fences with Polly a little bit. How are you guys? How did that come about? Oh, we, which is another thing, they could only show so much, but I, I had the worst anxiety going. As soon as I saw him at the airport, mm. up, he get released, like on the way to the airport, the cast was dropped and I saw everybody. I was like, fuck. And then I saw him at the airport. I was like, oh shit. I hadn't seen him in four years. Like my anxiety was so bad. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And we didn't talk the whole time in the airport flying to, to location. 
we get on that boat and that's no i'm lying we sit in front of production he's still like giving me the cold shoulder doing the whole poly thing i was like oh my god this is gonna be like i really try to come in here with good energy and like you know play my best game i'm like oh this is gonna be hell <laughs> production pull we're on this boat ride in like the intro scene where we're on this big ass yacht or cruise i don't know what you want to call it we're sailing in and production pulls him and then they pull me into a conversation which they didn't show well they show that clip of me and him talking but we literally had like a 30 minute conversation on that boat and i was just like listen it's either gonna be we're gonna be friends and we're gonna be good or it's gonna be war like what it's all on you like i don't have I don't hold grudges against people and I, I can't live my life with having hate in my heart towards anybody. So I'm a very forgiving person and it was all on him. And he definitely like, he has changed so much and it's like, I'm dealing with a whole different person. And I knew that guy was always there, but I'm really happy to see him in a good space. And just like for us to be in a good spot, I think that just for future seasons, I think it's good for us. Um, Cause I definitely was really nervous about that. And I'm glad that, we can walk away from this season and be friends. Yeah, that was that was nice to see. Um, and you even picked him for your team, didn't you? Oh yeah, that was all strategy. I was like, you were like, I gotta have him on my team because he's definitely gonna be against me. If not, yeah, that was smart. Very smart. And rallying people against me and my crew. So that was <laughs> really. We were roommates too, which I don't know if people knew. Me, him, Johnny, and Dusty were roommates. Dusty. <laughs> we had good conversations and I was just like really happy to see this whole different side of him. And I think that for him, it was really good. And I think he's going to continue to be called back for the show. Cause I think even production saw that and they love that. So, yeah. Nice. Um, will we see any new beef maybe coming out of this season or are we good with everybody right now? Cause I saw Wes is unfollowing some people. So I didn't know what was going on with that. <laughs> oh, not you getting the real juice. I mean, I watched the episode last night and I, I, I get his frustration, but he's very, he's taking this very seriously, obviously as a kid now, but like, what, yeah. What is the deal here? What, what is the beef with this situation? Oh God. I, I so I can't say much, <laughs> a lot of to play out, but what I will say is, listen, I think I'm going to say this. I think Wes is a great guy and I have love for the dude, but we're not friends. We're not friends. I found out that he was bashing me to some of my castmates because obviously how everything plays out on this season, which I can't get into because it hasn't aired. Right. But he's bashing me to some of our castmates and things like that. And it's like, you know what? I see the good in you and I know you have a good heart, but you're obviously taking this game way too personal. For somebody that's paid for 20 something seasons, you would think, or 15 seasons, you would think that he would be able to detach. But, um, I get it. Do I think it's his last rodeo? Hell no. He's not going to I don't think so. Oh, no. I I tweeted and I was like, I'll see you in six months, buddy. (laughs) But but I don't think, you know, my thing is like, I I can be a good person and have love for you. But once you like continue to bash me and then I saw the interview that he did and I'm going to take the high road and not engage in that because I know that why I know the reason why he's really mad and to say that you don't know why I'm here. Well, We'll see in a few episodes why I get the call, and I think he knows why I get the call. So, mm. um, we're that's gonna a good see, tease. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see that play out. Which, you know, I had a lot to say about that, but I kept that to myself. But um, I think I don't know. I think he's just when he's not able to get his way, and not able to manipulate people. And the CBS kids are gamers, dude. You're not going to run game on these people. If anything, they made us all up our game. And I think that's where he was frustrated and he felt out of the loop. And the guy was sleeping most of the time in there, like not in on stations, <laughs> not in on game. And he thought he knew it on. He was so in the outs. And it was like kind of shocking, honestly, to see um, that, you know, I, I, I genuinely felt bad for him at some point. I was like, damn, I really want to help Wes. Like, I feel really bad. Um, I felt bad for him. Um, but I think, yeah, like people like Michaela and people like Desi and Chanel, these people know what they're doing and they're yeah. not this type of Love Island kids and people from dating shows that come in and they're there to have fun and make good TV. Like these people were there to play. And I think that that would just caught him off guard. Hmm. You know? That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I know there are some conspiracy theories going around about time loss, Dusty winning over, or I don't know. Do you do you buy into this? Like everyone's like, show the clock. Is this a thing or? I don't know. Listen, I was there and we all said our goodbyes to Wes. We all ran we down. We did, right? Ran down 
and said our goodbyes. We were like, dude, you've had a great run. You'll be back. We'll see you in a few months. Like we all genuinely thought that mm -hmm. we all genuinely thought that Wes lost. And when they said that I was, I mean, you saw our reactions. I don't know if they showed our, but we were fucking sh like shocked. I've never been more shocked in my life. Wow. So yeah, mm -hmm. but I think that I don't think, I don't think production rigs anything, but definitely like watching it being there in person. I don't even think the edit did it justice. I was like, oh, Dusty smoked this guy. Like, I'm mm. like, oh, this is clear as day. But um, I don't think production would rig anything. And I don't think that they would do anything like that. But fans love, you know, the theories, I guess. Um, I yeah. do. <laughs> There's like there there were hints of a Cassidy romance and like the trailer and stuff. Do you go into these shows when you're single, like looking for something or you're just like open to it or you're like, no, I'm here to play. Like what's your, I guess, mentality when it comes to that? I think I'm, I, I don't go in with the intention of, oh, I'm going to, you know, fall in love or, you know, meet somebody in there. It just happens. You know, you're in there. There's no distractions. It's just us locked in a freaking house. And so you grow a bond quick and you, these friendships are intense and these relationships are intense because we're all we have in there. So yeah, right off the bat, I was attracted to her and we vibed and we just had really deep, good conversations about life. Like we would talk about aliens and the universe and spirituality and like the weirdest shit and for hours and just vibe. Um, so I think that initially there was like that attraction or just like that connection. Um, but she we're going to have to see what they show with that. I don't know yeah, <laughs> I figured I figured we'll see a little bit more. Um, I, there's definitely there was definitely an initial attraction there and there was definitely a bond and a friendship in the start. Um, but yeah. Okay. I love that for you. Okay. Um, in terms of social game, what do you think is harder, big brother or the challenge? The challenge. Mm, just a lot of personalities and people who have been doing this for years. Right. But I think, um, people know what they're doing. And like, I think every single person has different intentions. Some people are there to play the game. Some people are there to get followers. Some people are there to make good TV. Some people are there. Everybody's intentions is just different. Mm -hmm. um, and you obviously come in with set relationships. So it's like, I could have walked in this season and been like, oh yeah, me and Tori aren't working together. And me and Johnny aren't working together. And me and Fessy's not my best friend. Everybody knows what's up. So it's like, you can't really, like what's the re dude? doing? Like they can never run that game. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. you come already with established relationships and we all know that we all know who's close with who who's tied with who so definitely the challenge is way harder um but i think just big brother how long the game is i was in there for 92 days and by day 60 i i mean by day 20 i cracked but <laughs> six you're just burnt out you're just like holy you're just thinking game and i want to go home like that's all that's going through your head yeah it's like, to the end i can't wait to see my family i wonder if everybody's breathing if everybody's okay. like, it's brutal in that house yeah no i definitely give you guys credit could never be me uh that's a long game and i would go crazy with all these people but yeah and i do want to talk a little bit about bb19 you know i get a lot of questions well first of all who from your season do you still talk to if anyone yeah so i honestly everybody's kind of doing their own thing and drifted but i keep in contact like i message here and there with Christmas and Paul and those are the two that I'm always been the closest with I you know we're all doing our own things and living our life but that relationship and that love is I think especially the ones that you make it to the end with like you're always no matter what gonna have that um bond you know like I don't care how much time goes by like I feel like me and Paul are always gonna be good and me and Christmas are always gonna be good um but I have love for all of them and I you know I'm glad to see a lot of them doing good and living their life but I don't really keep in touch like that but um yeah I'm, I'm it glad that I <laughs> it's like high school you don't keep in touch with everybody well I do want to talk about um your goodbye messages because I think you always use your goodbye messages to explain your game which obviously helped you in the end um I know big brother Canada winner Kevin Jacobs he even cited in an interview once that he took that from your game for his game is to use those goodbye messages. Do you like, were you expecting that to have such a big impact when you were doing that? Yeah. Mm. And I never said this before. What? <laughs> I said this before, but oof. listen, if I play again production, I love you. <laughs> I got to be safe with what I say, but yeah. I was becoming. After I did it two or three times, 
I knew that it was becoming a thing because when I would go into the DR to do my goodbyes, I would have this producer that I love that I'll never say their name. And they were just like, are you ready to blow shit up? And I was just like, yeah, like, let's do it. And this is like, they already knew that that was my style and that's what I was going with. And that's what I was doing. And I would just literally go in there and let it rip. And he was, you know, Paul was so good, but he didn't, if he would have just owned it in the end, that kind of clean sweep, like, but he wasn't owning it. And I knew that. And I knew that he wasn't owning it in his, but even when he was saying goodbye to people, he was like, oh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Dude, I'm blowing your shit up right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I caught wind like by the third person headed to jury. I was like, okay, this is definitely something. Um, did I think that it was gonna get me the win? You know what's so crazy? I always had a gut feeling, even before, like as a kid, like the first time I watched Big Brother, I was like, I'm gonna be on that show. And when I was in that house, I was like, I I didn't go in to play this Maverick game. I didn't care to make these crazy moves i was like i need to get to that seat I, I need to win and in my gut i swear to god i just knew in my gut that it was going to happen for me did i think my goodbye messages were going to be a, a huge thing that were going to do that for me no but i knew that it was becoming something and i knew that it was like catching speed and i was like okay this is definitely they're watching it like they they know what's going on and it was the only way that i can expose his game without blowing up my game in there like if i would have if i would have blew up his game i don't know I, everybody was so hook line and sinker with him that I think it would have turned on me so mm. yeah. yeah it's interesting because I, I don't know about you but you know you don't get many chances to talk to the jury that that finale is so rushed and everything so do you think people use their good mind by messages enough these days I still feel like they don't I I'll be real with you after my season and and Thank you, Kevin, for giving me the credit because I feel like a lot of people don't. Janelle, which I love, every year she sees somebody doing that, she tags me on Twitter Aww. and she credit for it. And she's told me like that was genius. But a lot of people don't give me credit for that. But I've seen it ever since my season. And I'm not taking credit and saying that I created that. I know people before me. And I'll be real with you, where I really first saw it was with Ian and Ian. Yeah did something along those lines not like every single goodbye but he did that and i was like oh shit and with, i knew with boogie he was like yeah, yeah I, was, you. <laughs> I wasn't the first one but i definitely was like i'm gonna drill it in every single goodbye and i think that what i always told myself in there was like the game's not over till you walk through those doors so every angle you can play like you can literally you don't have to stop playing so i i knew that that was definitely my my with my goodbyes was to do that but Every single season since mine, I've seen it happen. And it's just like, all right, well, I guess I left my little mark, if you want to say, as a winner or whatever. But um, yeah, I think that it's genius. Like, how do you not use your goodbyes to blow up somebody's game or to expose something? It's the That's, smartest. Yeah, you don't have much time. So you have to do that stuff. Um, I do want to ask, and I don't know if this is a sore subject, but I know you get this a lot. And it honestly is frustrating for me. I've always been under the impression or I've always believed that, listen, if you win this, if you win Big Brother, you deserve to win Big Brother. Um, jury management is part of the game. And that's coming from someone who, you know, loved Dan and, and wish he won 14. But like, when people are like, Paul was robbed, how does that make you feel? Like, is that annoying to you? Um, so when I first, to be real with you, when I first got off the show, yeah, it was really, it was tough, because obviously, I was a fan. Like, yeah, I don't reality show but big brother that was like my show like that was my thing so i get off and i'm hearing that from fans but then i didn't have what was really tough was not having the support from like alum that i like looked up to winners that i've like watched and i was like oh my god i can't wait to meet these people like i didn't have like i saw some of them at events and they wouldn't even look at me and it was just like it, it, it was just like really weird for a while i'm not gonna lie that did bother me but now i'm like dude, I don't care. Like I didn't go in there to be the best winner. I went in there. I was $600 to my name, broke guy straight out of college at 22 years old, wanting to help my family financially. Like all I wanted to do was win the money. And I did. So like, no matter how many people say, you know, oh, you didn't deserve your win. Like I still won, you know, I, I'm still a champ. And my objective was to get that money. And I did. Now if I play again, would I play, a more strategic, you know, probably toned down my temper, like a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I have, I have a clear 
I know what I'm getting myself into. So I think I would play what they would call a more strategic game. But, you know, I don't care now. And my life has that game, that win has completely changed the course of my life. So no amount of hate or you didn't deserve it or anything, um, you know, means anything anymore. I think I'm I think I'm very underrated. But, yeah, Paul was a great player and he's a great he's one of the best ever play of the game. You can't take that away from the guy. And I'm his biggest fan. Um, but you know, I, I did, I did make relationships and build connections in there. And I think that people just respected or hated him more. So yeah, bitter yeah. jury, made the jury bitter. That's part of the game, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. I think, um, people are starting to come around, not start to come around, but like, I think we look back on BB19, at least I do. And I'm like, you know, I didn't appreciate it in the moment, but it was a great season of Big Brother. It was a mess. It was a hot mess, but it was fun. Well, it's funny. <laughs> this conversation a while ago and we we're like dude we're aging like fine wine like a bit bitter at the end of the beginning <laughs> like you know it's 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 I think our season was the last true season where people you know it was just it, it was such a chaotic group of people it really <laughs> yes. it was like random fucking wild cards and you know we've made for great tv because we were a mess we were literally a mess but um i don't know I, I i what i will take from my season what i respect is like at least we all like i mean i don't know how to say it but we were unfiltered and we like spoke our minds and we didn't give a shit and like it was so chaotic in there but like now i watch seasons and or watch reality tv and you could tell people are playing into the fans and are even with the challenge, like, you know, people are going in there and playing it safe and not having certain conversations and speaking their mind because they don't want to be edited. They're self editing themselves. And that's what frustrates me, especially when I'm filming with people like that. Cause I'm like, see, I don't, I can't rock with somebody like you. Like it's John, not genuine. My season, I think, <laughs> you know, people didn't give a shit and they were just crazy. And I, and I can respect that, I guess. Yeah. How old were you when you won Josh? Three. I'm sorry. 23 yeah that's really young so the fact that you I mean I, I I feel like you're a different person at 23 than you are in your 30s or whatever so it's very well, interesting. I, watch, I watch clips of myself and I'm just like I'm like just completely different man and and that and that experience definitely the growth I gained from that show that people will never know it's just I I will forever be grateful for it because I definitely in those three four months I've I can never get that from any other experience, but um, yeah, I feel like I'm just a completely different person. Yeah, as you should be. You got older. Um, people, of course, we have to talk a little bit about BB22. I know you weren't on it. You know, people want to know because they're like, "What if Josh was on it?" First of all, you you got you tested positive for COVID, whether it was false or whatever. Like you you didn't go in the game, but um how, well first of all how frustrating was that when you like were so, probably all psyched up to go in and then you can't <laughs> oh that was that was tough yeah that was, and you know I I I always do the I on on you know and I'm, I'll be honest with you on social media I always take the high road or try to take the high road and I try to just like show like the positive side of everything and but the reality was like I was so devastated I remember so I'll keep it real try to keep it short for you but oh god I, the question People i want to hear from you so god <laughs> i said i was out in la we were all in our houses and all that stuff and i tested positive i had like three consecutive positives and then a false like five days into being sequestered a false comes back or a negative comes back then a positive then a negative so i had covid prior i had covid before going into sequester i got healthy i was I was good, but then I started testing um, or whatever it was. Negative. You had the antibodies, basically, is what you're saying. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, so I was getting good already and I was good. And then so they literally dropped me. They were trying. The doctors were coming to see me every single day in sequester. Like I did the photo shoots. I was doing the interviews. I did all of that. And the whole time is just like I'm having conversations, 10 minute conversations with my family crying on the phone. I'm like, damn, I'm getting emotional to think about it. And I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to be on mom. Like, I don't know, but please pray for me. Like, I don't know what's going on, but they would give me that call so that I could, cause I was just, it was me in the house by myself, which was dope. They put us in a house, but, um, Damn. Early days, I think we got announced like two days before I got, and I got dropped. They're like, I'm sorry, you can't go in. Like we tried our best. We tried it. And they really did. 
but the doctor didn't clear me. And they're like, you're healthy. You're not sick anymore. But at this point you have two neg like the, we can't put you in the house. It's a risk. So I got dropped and I was so heartbroken being the fan, being a fan and going on all stars, like such a dream. And honestly, the pay was a decent pay. I was just like, I had turned, I had just turned down the challenge to go do all stars. Like production with the challenge was a little bitter with me. And they're like, really dude, like we made this investment in you and you're going to ditch us. Uh, but thankfully they took me like <laughs> weeks and then I went on double agent. So they took me back, thankfully. But yeah, it was tough. So even watching that season, it was really hard. And I really do think that, and I can say this now, hindsight, like I'm so grateful I wasn't on that season. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I wasn't. And it all played out perfect because I think that I've, if, I think it would have been a mess for me. I wasn't in a good state physically. I wasn't healthy. Like obviously COVID, we were all home and, you know, I wasn't training. And men, I think COVID really messed, like, screwed me up mentally mm -hmm. uh I didn't realize how much I depended on friends and family and I, I'm such an like social person and outdoors all the time so like being locked up definitely messed me up and getting sick but I just don't think it was the time for me and I'm so happy that I wasn't part of 22 like I really truly now that I look at it I'm just like I happy I'm happy how it played out yeah I mean listen things happen for a reason it's definitely a bummer um I know a lot of people were bummed because you would have been really fun and uh, a lot of people complain that season wasn't that fun. So how do you oh. think, how do you think it would have played out if you were in there, if Casey was in there even, because I know you guys are friends, it would have been totally different, right? It would have been a whole, we, the house would have been, and I can say this because I knew, by the way, I got blamed for so much pre-gaming. I was going to bring up the pre-gaming. I've heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> because I was blamed for so much pre-gaming and the only people that I spoke to which I can say this now, we're Casey and Dave on because we were all in negotiations for the challenge and we all dropped the challenge for All-Stars. So those were the only people that knew that I was really going on. And I was like, what are we doing? I was going back and forth with producers like, this is what they're offering me. Can you match that? Like, that's what I was doing. So those were the only two. Oh, and Christmas found out like a week before we left. But nobody else. I did not pregame with anybody. I was leaked before All-Stars was even leaked. Like, I don't even know how that happened. I think uh, I leaked your name. <laughs> yeah, rumored. Yeah, you did this to me. So, and then the man that I don't like to mention his name, but Evil Dick was spreading. Oh. <laughs> As I'm get going into sequester, I'm seeing all this madness and TMZ and all this stuff online. And I'm just like, guys, I have not pre-gamed. So I'm like, I'm going to get cooked when I go in there. But also these people know that I haven't reached out to them. So I think I would have been fine, but it would have been a split house because I was definitely, and which I like them now, but I was definitely, I was going to go after Danny and and I wanted, the one person that I really wanted to reach out to was Janelle and I didn't. Um, and I really, really, really wanted to play with Janelle and Kayser. So I think it would have been a split house. Hmm. Um, like the steamroll of the season that they had. And I also told production, I remember telling um, Allison and them in the calls, like, guys, I had one already. I'm going there. I'm going in there and I'm literally just dropping a bomb. every. Like, I'm just going off like I'm just gonna I'm gonna be a wrecking ball in there so just let me go like like uh, to the house let me do my thing and they're like all right as long as you don't threaten us to quit every week and I was right. like oh. so yeah Man, we been... missed out on some good Josh stuff <laughs> well I'm glad I probably would have been canceled <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm that it, they didn't get that side of me and I'm I'm, I'm happy I it worked out but yeah it was gonna be it would have been a mess it would have been yeah a mess. I will say with the whole pre-gaming thing, listen, it happens on every returning season, on every sh reality show. I don't care what people say. It's not specific to Big Brother or BB-22. It happens every season. So, <laughs> um, well, I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> having Zoom calls. I knew winners that were calling people and all of that came to light. And I knew that that was happening, but I was not one of them. And I was getting all the heat. I was like, dude, what the hell? I heard about some Zoom calls too. I never released that information, but I definitely knew about them. We, after the show was said and done, and like even now during me and Tyler were having conversations and we were laughing about that. We're like, dude. <laughs> and they weren't even on the show. Some of them weren't even on the show and they were having Zoom calls. So it's just funny. Yeah. I, I know you and Tyler were like friendly on the challenge this season. Are you guys working? Not really, right? You're not really working together. They don't really show it, but... Yeah, for sure. Tyler was one of the people 
in the Big Brother Alliance that I was like, he's an untouchable for me. A lot of people mm -hmm. knew Johnny. They all knew. Like, every time Tyler's name came up, I was like, we're not – me and Fessy were clear on, like, we're going to protect and have Tyler's back. Um, and that was, like, an unspoken thing. So, definitely, Tyler was somebody I looked after, and he's a really good friend of mine, and I was just happy to see him on. So yeah, I thought I so. I thought you guys were good. Um, I, so, you are interested in playing Big Brother again at some point. Yes, Josh? 100%. Like yeah. a full season, you'll do it? I would not. So I could see, I, I say this now out of, ex I love the game. I love Big Brother. I love the experience, everything from like waking up in that house and putting on my mic pack and just every single moment I like, it was like a kid living a dream. So I love that, but I don't know if I could do a hundred days. I really don't like a lot. <laughs> I did the longest season of the challenge I did was like 70 days and I've, by the end, I was just like, dude, I'm done. Like, this is too much. And we have freedom, at least more freedom than being in the Big Brother house. So I don't know if I could do a full season, but yeah. Could do it. Um, well, if the paycheck is right, do it. Uh <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> if you see me back in the house, that check was nice. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, it Well, you know, people talk about all winter season or legend season, you know, whether it's a full season or a three-week season, whatever. Would you... Do you think it'd be fun to do an all winter season or does that kind of season, would you rather play with like newbies? Like what, what do you think? I think it's time. Like, it's like, what are yeah. we, like I'm at the point where I'm about to call up Allison and Rich and like, be like, dude, what is going on? Like one of my favorite, I, I, the past few years I got into survivor and one of my favorite seasons was winners at war. Like it was so good. And it's like, how do you not give the fans at this point a winter season I think that there's so many people that I would love to see play, but the, I think that's, I always said I would want to do an all-star season, but after seeing the last all-stars, I'm just like, oh, I think I Not. would, want, I think I would, if I did big brother, ideally, if I did big brother again, I would love to do a winter season. I think I'm very underrated. I think a lot of people don't respect my game and I would just love to show one, my growth, but not my growth personally, like my growth, as a player um but also as a fan i would love to play with some of these people i'm just a fan of a lot of these guys and a lot of these winners so i would love to see them play again so yeah i would definitely definitely yeah who do you, who who do you want to play with like any any names come to mind who would i want to get out <laughs> you don't you don't have to give your strategy away just in case it does happen but like who would you want to see play like you want to play against like the big wigs like you want big and names you, in there oh 100% i think you have to have I mean, you have to have like the goats, right? The ones that everybody considers the goats, like Dan and um, Derek. And I would love to play with Cody. I think Cody is like such a great player. I've never personally met him, but I would love to play with him and see see how he would play now. Um, I would love to see what Dan. I don't think Dan would do this. I don't think he would do it again. I don't. I don't talk to Dan. I've I, I've never talked to him, but um, I don't know if he would do it. But I would love to see him try to pull some things like I don't think he would be able to run game on us so I would want to see him just for the fact of like all right you did it twice let's see you do it three times <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. I I think if Dan's in there like that would be just as a as a fan of the show it's like all right I want to see what he has up his sleeve he's somebody that's always going to keep you on your toes and it's exciting um Xavier fucking I met him before and love the dude I would love yeah. to see him there obviously um Nicole which I love Casey one of my good friends so I don't know I would love um yeah now I'm geeking out about it I'm just like oh. <laughs> well listen CBS needs to get they know because I complain to them all the time about it but like this is the perfect time to do it even if you do a three-week season kind of like Celebrity Big Brother because I do feel like well obviously the paycheck would have to be right for a lot of people but it's an easier commitment for everyone to just say, hey, let's do like a three week season for all winners. I feel like they could get big people. I agree. I think instead of I mean, that's the perfect timing. Instead of doing a celebrity one, do a winners. And I think mm -hmm. honestly, think, you know, there's so many big egos. There's so many people. Yes. Title of like, I mean, how do you settle that? It's like throw a bunch of winners in the house and let everybody go to war. And I think that that's going to make for great TV and great gameplay. And I I mean, I would be excited as a fan. I'm going to be geeking out. If I get the call and I'm there, I'm going to lose it. But then it's like playing with these people. It's like, oh, shit. Like, you know, it's game time. So I would, 
I mean, there's so many Andy, June, Lisa, Nicole. Like, there's, I mean, I can go off. Rachel Riley. Like, how do you, I think Rachel's packed right now. I think she's ready. To yeah, play. she's ready. Rachel's like, dude. She's been me, ready. Give me the call. She's there. So it's time, dude. It's just time. And I think that everybody's ready for it. So I hope that, you know, it does happen. But just as a fan myself, even if I'm not there, it's something I would want to watch at this point. Well, if you're not there, that seems a little crazy. I think you could you could be there. You you we need someone in there to be like a little bit more fun. Um have you ever thought about doing any other shows? Are you like, I'm good with these two? Or have you thought about like Survivor, Traders, any of these other shows? Um, I've been reached out. What's so wild is as a not recent i've always been reached out to do other shows and stuff like that but i've always prioritized the challenge or i think that my heart would has been aligned with the challenge that i've i have truly fallen in love with the filming experience of the challenge like mm. i love that i'm even people love to bring on my record and that i haven't won and haven't made a final i was like and that's exactly why i love to do it because i'm evolving and growing and challenging myself um, and just like becoming a better person every single season that I do. And I'm becoming a better man and just like working on myself constantly to be the best competitor or the best person that I can be. So I love filming the challenge, but there has been projects that I've had to turn down because of contract or because same like date. And that's been a bummer. Cause I'm like, damn, I really want to do that. Um, so you can't, you can't say which ones. Okay. I can probably find out. It's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. One recently that I actually turned down, which would have been so sick to be part of, and I mean the check was pretty decent. It was good. Was um, it hasn't. It's a new show. It's called The Goat. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, they send me the contract. They send me the offer. I mean, the money was going up constantly, and I was like, oh shit, like this is really enticing. If it would have been if it would have been the goat and it would have been the MTV version, I would have done the goat instead of the MTV version. But since it was CBS and I was like, and there's the first time they're bringing us over, well, the MTV people over, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go with this. And but I I left that relationship with the execs over at Prime and all that good, and we'll we see. had the same was good. So hopefully, if there's a season two, but that was one that I was like, damn. I was really bummed about, but there's people on there that I'm going to be obviously Dave on and Wendell, which I love that I'll be rooting for. But, and then, um, yeah, I think that's the only one I'm going to share with you right now. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm sure the, there's more reality shows than ever. So I'm sure like people are constantly getting calls for these random shows. At least I'm getting texts from friends being like, yeah, I was asked to do this and this. And some of these shows sound like similar, like there's now house of villains, the goat, there's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> But yeah, hopefully we'll see you on something else one day. Um, yeah, listen, I'm 29 and I'm so grateful with God and thankful that this has turned into something for me because never did I think it would, but I'm six years in and I think that I'm at the point where it's like, while I will continue, if they continue to call me for the challenge, I'll be there. Like, I think I'm at the point and like, obviously with the opportunities that I'm getting reached out for, I definitely want to branch out. And I think that is going to happen. It's just like, it all has to align and obviously contract purposes like i can't do certain things but yeah, yeah. I, think, I think i'll bring my madness into other networks <laughs> before we wrap up you know this is the exclusive and i always ask my guest you know is there something you can share that maybe we don't know already about your either your time on one of your shows or before and the casting process or anything like that is there anything that you can share with my listeners mm. that maybe we don't know i know it's hard because you've you're pretty open with your stuff. So I don't, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I feel like I share a lot and I'm pretty open, but I'm like, certain things I'm like, dude, I say this, I probably won't get called for another show. I'm like, I'm like, well, yeah, don't get in trouble. But if there's anything, maybe. And the goods, but I think there's, so um, I think with Big Brother, I think, so with Big Brother, it's like people think that they see it all. You mm -hmm. really, there's moments that you don't see. Like when you're waiting, when you're in lockdown in the HOH room prepping for a live show, you're in there for four or five hours. That's when everybody has like the nasty real conversations or like when people, there was multiple times in there that I got into it with Cody and it got really ugly sometimes. And it was just like things like that that people miss. And then you see people's reactions. You're like, oh, why is this person acting? There's like, well, there's things that goes on, but 
I don't know. There was a lot of things with Big Brother. I, there's one that's coming up with Paul on finale night. And my brother will, always tells me, he's like, what were you guys? Like, we got, they show my goodbye messages and we cut to commercial. And Paul was just so, got up, stormed from the sofas and was like so pissed. And production kept telling him to come back. And I remember just looking at him. I was like, did you think like, I'm like, what? You thought I was just not going to like play or like, and yeah. he was super fan you've been lying to me and like he thought it was so cowardly that i like exposed him and goodbye messages and it was it got really awkward because i'm like damn you've become one of my best friends but it's like now there's money on the line and it's like all right um so that was pretty awkward we kind of got into a little not an argument but it was like an awkward conversation tension between us um and then we came back and i mean you saw that play out yeah um, i've rewatched it just before the interview and i i remember like um Paul said, like, yeah, you were throwing me under the bus. And I'm like, I wish you did that, Paul. <laughs> it was, it was weird. It was really weird. That was like a weird moment. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think, I think, see, I'm blanking right now. But I think when you get out of the house initially, like you walk out, you walk in there, nobody knows you, nobody, like, you know, you really don't, you like know what Big Brother is and you, you watch the show, but like, living that experience and being thrown into this life and being thrown into that is like truly, truly insane. And that's why I empathize. And I'm, I didn't have much alum, like if supportive, you want to say, so I try to be like super supportive and super kind and like understanding to everyone, because it's like, I know how hard it is to walk out to that madness. And especially like when we walk out of there, we're thrown into like after parties and people are screaming your name and people are pulling you all direction. It's like, dude, I just need a minute to breathe. It felt like <laughs> on go, like, like from the moment I walked out of the house. So it's a lot. Like, I don't really have a specific moment. I'm sorry, but. No, but that was great. And honestly, I, I agree. Like, I, there's nothing that you can prepare you for Big Brother because it's such a weird experience of like going in with nobody knowing who you are, being locked in somewhere and then getting out and then expecting. It's just, it's so bizarre. Like the whole experience has to be like a little bit traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> But Josh, you've been like so open and I appreciate it because like you're always fun to talk to. And um, yeah, is there anything else like that you've ever wanted to clear up or anything else that you wanted to talk about that you think maybe people misunderstand about you? Or do you feel like we, we covered everything? I think we covered everything. I yeah, don't really know. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I think with me, um, when I first started doing TV, I, I you know, I, I fell into deep like deep depression and I was always so embarrassed to admit it publicly because I was like oh like there's real shit going on in, in the world but like people are going like through real life stuff and I'm over here crying about being misunderstood on tv but I think the more and more that I've gotten hate or judged or you know people bashing me on the internet it's like the more freedom I feel to just like be myself and be authentically me and not care so it's like thank you for giving me that and I feel very misunderstood on TV, but I'm at the point where I've I'm embracing it and I love it and I'm I love what I do and I don't plan on walking away from it anytime soon. So um damn, we're getting deep right now. I know. <laughs> but it's, I think the tide is turning on you, John. Even on the challenge, I feel like you had a rough go. I watched the first couple of seasons you were on. I like fell off a little bit, but um, because I was like the same people running the show. But um, no, I think I think people are starting to respect your game more, and I'm that's why I want I want to see you back on Big Brother. I really do. I think it would be fun, and I I'm, think you I think, would be an underestimated immediately for sure. And I and it's good. I I want that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that. But also, it's it's just. I think for me, it's just you know I don't live for, and 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 it's obviously it's taken me a long time. I'm 29, so it's like it's taken me a while to get here but I don't live for like acceptance or approval or people like oh I'm the greatest at these games all that stuff it's like I live such a fortunate blessed life and I'm so lucky that I get to do what I do and it comes with all this baggage but um I'll take it every day like I'll take all day every day um and if you see me back on Big Brother I think it's gonna be fun because I'm just gonna geek out I'm just like I love the game too much to not be on 10 the whole time of they're filled with excitement bouncing off a wall so I hope they do Allison and Rich, do a winter season. This oh. a oh. <laughs> There's a writer strike. Reality TV is where it's at right now. Let's just, let's do it. That's what I say, at least. Um, well, thank you, Josh. Like I said, it was so nice talking with you. Uh, for the listeners, 
I'm back every week with a new winner. I love talking to winners because these are the people that know how to win the game. Like we can all sit on our couch and say we would do this and we would do that, but like they won the game. And so that's why I kind of wanted to talk to the winners. So yeah, please like subscribe, leave a five-star review if you like my interviews and I will be back with my exit interviews on Friday. Thank you.